April 29th is International Dance Day. Here are two ways to celebrate. First, second, I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome to another episode of Books and Beer, a weekly odd and hopefully interesting foray into the world of indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and our topic today is fear. The fear that as a writer, nobody will want to hear what you have to say, not even your mom. Our guest today is Michael O'Reilly. So, Michael, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what you are drinking. Hi there. My name is Michael O'Reilly. Uh, I'll start with the important part. I am drinking a margarita. Uh, as it happens, my wife makes the best margaritas in the world, so nice. I've got that going for me. Um, I am, I guess as my byline says, an IT guy by day, and I do a variety of uh, hopefully creative things at other times, one of which includes writing. My uh, beer this evening, we're going to put my cat up. This might be a repeat, but it was the first one I grabbed, and I was hankering for it. Um, it is one of our home brews. It is the Rigor Mortis. My wife makes uh, injury-themed names and bottle caps for all of these, and it's a super hoppy, rye monster beer, though. I'm fond of, so. Very tasty stuff. I am a giant fan. I am drinking the Imperial... Tanilla. Dun, 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 dun. Which is from Knee Deep Brewing Company. Uh, you've had the Tanilla before, Jeff. It is a vanilla porter, but uh, an imperial or vanilla stout, which is it? I don't know. But anyhow, it's really good and really imperial and really high alcohol content. So it'll be a good time. Okay. Excellent. So, Michael, you're a, you're a writer. Um, what does that mean in, in your definition of, of publishing? Well, I certainly am a writer on occasion. Um, conveniently, the, uh, the new digital world uh, kind of increasingly allows everyone to partake in that uh, more so than perhaps in the past. Um, to me, I guess the the simplest definition is a writer is someone who writes, you know, kind of self-explanatory. Um, looked at a little bit wider, um, it is someone who has something that they want to say or express or share, and they choose to do so in a text format. Um, it's maybe not quite as... Um, as easy as, say, a photography format. Um, you know, you see a, a lot of that um, on the internet, on Google+, Plus, etc. Um, writing is, I think, a similar outlet for creativity, um, for sharing your view on the world. Um, but I, I think ahead. in, with digital publishing and the way that it's transforming things, there's a wide range of definitions from people who just write because it's a nice creative outlet to we think writer is synonymous with being a published author and then that opens up the can sure. of published even means. So it sounds like you're somewhere in the middle. You, you're you not just writing for yourself, you're writing and putting a lot of content out there for people but not through the major marketplaces. That's correct. I think that um, I don't, I, I wouldn't say being a professional author, i.e. you've been paid for your writing is necessary for the term writer. I think that um, you know, given given the outlets, you know, publishing on Google Plus, blogging, uh, wherever, uh, there are definitely people who uh, have something to say and choose to say it in a very professional quality manner, but they're not necessarily being paid for it. So the 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 title of this of uh, show we're doing here is why should anybody care uh, what it is that, that anyone ha has to write and I think every author struggles with that from time to time whether they're a published author or they're just writing things on the internets for people to actually see so 
let's just have you answer the question. Why should anybody care what you have to write? Sure. Well, I, I think that there are there are two sides to it. The the very first uh, the very first thing when when anyone is starting, you know, nobody nobody begins writing, you know, nobody learns to write because they're getting paid to do so. You know, everybody in the whole world starts as an unpaid writer. You know, it's it's the way of things. So everyone has to make that transition at some well okay everyone who's going to make that transition has to make that transition at some point so before you get to that point you you have to already be writing something mm -hmm. and so i think uh, much of it comes from the inside you, you know you earlier said uh, you know you're writing for other people not just for yourself i think that it begins probably with writing for yourself with the idea that you know hey maybe if i'm writing for myself someone else might have an interest in what i'm writing you know maybe my kids or you know other people in my family would want to read it or my friends or you know a wider audience uh, people who share my political outlook or like the type of fiction that i write you know whatever um, so, you know, it, it kind of starts, I think, always with writing for yourself, and perhaps the question is, you know, why should I care whether anyone cares to read what I have to write? Mm -hmm. that's, that's at the beginning. Um, if you want to move beyond that point, then you definitely do have to answer the, the question of, you know, why would somebody want to read what I have to say? Um, certainly, if you want to develop an audience uh, you need to be writing to that audience. Uh, if you want to be paid for your writing, you need to write with a certain amount of you know, quality to to get somebody to to pay you for it. So I think that both the the content of what you're writing matters for for answering the question of why would anyone care what I have to say. You know the the ideas that you're expressing. Uh, whether whether in fiction, you know the the interesting worlds you create, or in nonfiction, the interesting ideas and analysis you bring to the table, uh, or perhaps the interesting research that you do, uh, it it all appeals to someone, and as you as you begin to develop your voice you will uh, oftentimes through feedback learn who you're appealing to. Well, how do you find them out there? Or I mean, if, if I'm writing, especially something, say, unusual, if I'm writing young adult vampire fiction, that's not exactly a hard audience. Oh, that's, to find. that's unusual. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'm out of the field by myself. But if I'm writing something a little bit different, I've got my own voice, I've really not a lot of people have read it, how, how do I overcome that fear? Where do I go to find an audience to connect with to get, to get me started? Sure, I, I think that I think that historically, um, people beg their friends, families, acquaintance, whoever you know, anyone possible to to read their stuff and and give them um, feedback. Um, I've I've read a very good account by uh, Patrick Rothfuss. Um, who is you know a very highly acclaimed and an amazing author um, and and he talks about early early in his process of writing the name of the wind he was you know he was begging people to read the thing you know please please read my read my draft and and tell me what you think uh, you know just getting anyone to read your stuff is is a challenge that anyone faces at at the start I think that the the increasing um, digital proliferation, social networks, um, Google Plus, blogs, etc., give the opportunity for for someone to put their work up where it can be reached by anyone. You know, once once you have it in a in a public location on the internet, just about anyone in the world can get to it. So then, it's no longer a question of how you get this into someone's hands to read it. It's a question of how do you get their eyes to make it to 
to what you've written. And yeah, that's I, a, I think there's a there's a second part of that too, Michael, that comes out of here because getting people to read your stuff. When you're just starting out, whether whether you're just starting out as, as, as in, in writing before you've even published anything, and by that I mean regular marketplaces, um, or in, or just you know having people read your stuff on Google Plus or your blog or your Tumblr or whatever it happens to be, that's the same thing. I mean, no one is out there saying, "Man, if there was only a book, if there was only something for me to read." But no, I mean, there's there's a proliferation of, of, of stuff that gets out there. So I think it's a, a big part of it is figuring out. How do you keep them reading your stuff? Do you, do you think about that? Do you think about, okay, now that I've got someone, they enjoy the things that I read, do you consider ways to make sure that you can continue to feed them with good info? I, I think so. Uh, you certainly, or I, I find myself taking that into account. What have people reacted well to? When you, when you do get feedback of, you know, hey, I like this part, you, you kind of want to, you know, that feels good. And you you want to create more of that, and it's a uh, it's a little bit of an unusual situation in that writing the exact same thing won't then get the exact same reaction. You know that's been done now, so you you kind of have to you have to keep feeding it, and you know keep uh, pushing your own boundaries. Unless of course you're 38 special, which everyone in their own is. Sorry. There. We? <laughs> I don't even remember my question now. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate that. <laughs> so what, what are your personal goals with your writing and publishing or lack of publishing? Because it seems to me that the confronting the fear of, is anyone going to care? You know, a lot of that depends on where you're going. If you're trying to be a number one best-selling author, that's a much bigger looming fear than finding a balance of what you want to do for yourself and what you want to do for others and exploring that as an ongoing process. Absolutely. And I, you know, I think I'm in a pretty good place for answering that fear because I have no, um, no specific aspirations towards, you know, becoming a, you know, famous published author or, or anything like that. Uh, I mean, obviously the thought has crossed my mind, you know, wow, you know, I might write stuff and people will come clamoring to my door begging for more. Um, but to date that, that hasn't happened and I don't really lament that because I just do what I do and I write what I want to write and I write what, about what I want to write about and I get, I get reasonable feedback from the people who read it and you know, over time it slowly increases and, and that's fine by me. I think that's a very um, self-aware Way to way to look at things. There are many authors that that Jeff and I know, and you probably know as well, who think that all they've got to do is is publish something, and thousands of people will come clamoring to said door and say, "Here's your, here's my money, please. I want that." And like again, that's that's not a very not a very realistic thing. That's pretty smart. So I'm, we we have listeners out there, or watchers, whichever happens to be to our show, viewers. That's a better word than watchers. I'm going to go stick with watchers. No more viewers. We now have watchers. You are all watching, so you're a watcher. We have watchers of our program here who are in various stages of the publishing process, and some of them are, are way early because they get that there's writing and there's editing and then there's publishing promotion and all that, and we're, we're taking a trek with you on the very far end of that scale at the writing process, much as we had with Adam last week. Um, what, are, what would you suggest? We've only got a minute or so left here. Um, for the person who's just wanting to start out, rather than going to Amazon immediately, what is your publishing tool of choice? Where, where should they spend their time, if, if Michael could say, uh, publishing their work? I have found that Google Plus is an excellent forum for that. I think that it, um, it definitely gives you a place for long-form output that will um, have a shelf life. It'll, it'll be there as long as people care to look for it. And it's got a pretty good search engine behind it for people to find your stuff. That, in fact, it does. Let's make sure that we tag Brian Glick in this so that we can get a mention for the Google Plus as well. So, Awesome. Michael, thank you very much for being on the program with us today. It was my pleasure. 
And thanks to all of you out there for enjoying the show. Um, you can find links to Michael's Google Plus page and all the show notes at our website at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of e Publish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For more information, education, insight, and lots of fantastic stuff, check us out at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for enjoying the show or watching.